Sam, a beloved host who nearly burned down Emeril Lagasse's set. Fake kitchens, but very real departures. This is what you never knew about Food Network. Given how much television has changed in the past 20 years, it's hard to imagine a time when we didn't have our choice of hundreds, if not thousands, of different channels. But a time like that did exist. In the early 1990s, a couple of network executives were looking for a new idea for a broadcast outlet, and they landed on one entirely dedicated to food. In 1993, what we now know as Food Network hit cable television. According to Grub Street, when he heard the idea, Chef Emeril Lagasse said, "'Wow, a whole channel devoted to that? That's pretty amazing.'" Our sentiments exactly. The network was originally called TV Food Network, as the name Food Network was already taken. It didn't take long for the TV broadcast outlet to gain popularity. Within just a couple of years, the station, which was run by CNN co-founder Rhys Schoenfeld and his wife Pat O'Gorman, was garnering millions of viewers every night. As The New York Times reports, O'Gorman credited the network's success to the fact that you always have to eat. Before it was raking in millions of viewers and millions of dollars, the company was operating on a small budget and could only afford to air original programming. Chefs wanted a slot on the network because, as noted by some of the leading executives at the time, chefs in the United States weren't making the money that they do now. Appearing on Food Network was a great way to organically advertise for the restaurants. The outlet had no problem attracting top talent and received hundreds of audition tapes from chefs aspiring to bring their culinary genius to network television. Not all programming was successful, though, and the network had to be creative in its ideas. Some of its successful programming included its Chef Du Jour series and How to Boil Water. Food Network had to go through a lot of trial and error before landing on shows and chefs that were suitable for national television. One example is Emeril Lagasse, who, according to Grub Street, was told by Rhys Schoenfeld, "...the shows that you're producing for us right now are not good. You're fired. But we think that you're a great chef and a great cook and potentially could be a great teacher. Come to New York and let's visit. You're just not in the right environment." Schoenfeld was right, of course, and Lagasse became a Food Network staple for the next decade. Cooking can be dangerous. Chefs are surrounded by open flames and sharp knives. It is not for the faint of heart. In an attempt to bring real cooking experiences to life, Food Network has aired real injuries, too. One of its most successful programs, Chopped, features chefs from around the country competing against each other, and it's resulted in some unfortunate incidents. One competitor, Chef More Amateur, sliced himself while using a food processor, forcing him to start his dish over. He also received a lecture from the judges over the mishap. Chef Amateur wasn't the first person on Food Network to suffer an injury on set, though. Back in the 90s, when the network was still young, Chef Mario Batali was also injured on set. He took to Larry King to describe what happened, noting that he cut his fingers while grating some carrots. I thought that I would hide them, and I sunk them into a can of tomatoes to squeeze the tomatoes, and I pulled them out, and blood red is not tomato red." Apparently, food processors and graters aren't the only hazards on Food Network sets. Unsurprisingly, there have been multiple fire scares as well. Though we presume the network operates with the utmost caution, where there's fire, there's fire. And on a station that is dedicated to food, chefs are bound to come in close contact with a flame or two. One of the culprits is famed television chef Rachel Ray. Ray was with the network for years and grew to popularity by showing us all that food can be prepared quickly in her famous television show 30 Minute Meals. Before beginning with the network, she had to film a test, and she used Emeril Lagasse set. Nerves took over Ray, and instead of beginning to cook, she talked, letting her pan become very hot. When she eventually began to cook, she poured oil on the pan, which ignited a large flame and nearly set the kitchen ablaze. I set Emeril's kitchen <laughs> on fire. Another fire hazard occurred on the set of Chopped, when a competitor, Chef Hema Gray, burned her hands on an open flame. Though she didn't nearly set any property on fire, she certainly did some damage to her skin. We like to think that all of the chefs on Food Network are friends who host amazing dinner parties and potluck buffets for each other. But unfortunately, that is not the case. Though some of the chefs are legitimate friends like Reed Drummond and Trisha Yearwood, not all of them are quite so friendly. On the podcast Beyond the Plate, Jada De Laurentiis shared that after partnering up with Bobby Flay and losing on Iron Chef, she felt that he didn't take the competition seriously. She refrained from speaking to him again for eight months. De Laurentiis said of Flay's attitude after the competition, "...more than the loss, I was upset that he didn't seem to care." Regardless, she went on to explain that the two are close friends now. De Laurentiis isn't the only chef that Flay has rubbed the wrong way. During another Iron Chef episode, he highly offended fellow competitor, Chef Masaharu Morimoto. In response to the incident, Morimoto said, "...by the way, he's not a chef." We're not sure if it's Flay or the Iron Chef environment, but either way, he's been in some hot water with other chefs due to the famed competition. 
In the beginning, viewers were essentially limited to watching chefs cook, and while the network has stayed true to its roots, it's also expanded into other programming options, like competition and travel shows. Even though there's still plenty of programming dedicated to improving viewer skills in the kitchen, there are some recipes we won't see on Food Network because they just take too long to make. Food Network producer Ashley Archer told Tribe Live, I had to tell chef Alex Guarnaschelli that she couldn't make the chocolate crostata, sort of Italian chocolate pie that she wanted to prepare. It just had too many components for a 30-minute show. Though we'd love to see Guarnaschelli bake a chocolate crostata, we understand the limitations. Filming a television show is difficult, especially one with food involved. Take Chopped, for instance. Though it's not a tutorial-based show, there are several moving parts involved in filming. It takes 12 hours to shoot a one-hour episode, according to Grub Street. And those chefs aren't baking intricate Italian desserts. Perhaps one day we'll see Guarnaschelli bake her crostata on television, but until then, we'll just have to dream about it. Talent manager Shep Gordon once said to Grub Street of the pre-Food Network era, At that time, there wasn't a chef in America making $100,000. Things have certainly changed. Although $100,000 is widely considered a great living, chefs today, particularly those featured on Food Network, have the ability to rake in millions per year. According to Forbes, some of the highest-paid TV chefs include Bobby Flay and Reed Drummond, both of whom have starred in multiple programs on the network over the years. However, no Food Network chef is raking in the big bucks quite like Guy Fieri, who signed what's thought to be the largest contract with the network ever, a reported $80 million for three years of work. Fieri is definitely earning his keep. The mayor of Flavortown stays busy hosting multiple shows for the network, including Guy's Grocery Games and, of course, his famed diners, drive-ins, and dives. Food waste is a major issue in the United States. By simply watching Food Network, viewers can easily begin to wonder if it's contributing to the problem. But it's one show specifically that has some fans concerned – Cupcake Wars. The program is a competition show where competitors bake an excessive amount of cupcakes. Though it's fun to watch, it does seem like a major waste of food. Melissa Johnson, a senior challenge producer who worked on the show, said on the Marketplace podcast that some of the desserts are eaten by those on set. But donations can be tricky because there are many strict rules. Ultimately, a lot of it does get tossed out, but in some cases, the winning confections are put on display at events. Food Network has also used its programming to address the issue. In 2012, chefs Bobby Flay, Michael Simon, Anne Burrell, and Alex Guarnaschelli hosted The Big Waste, a special program dedicated to cooking with food that would otherwise go uneaten. Guarnaschelli has also written for the network, sharing tips on how to be more thoughtful with food choices while offering ways to minimize food waste at home. Though it's quite obvious that some TV chefs are in a studio, other cooks seem to be right at home. And we don't mean because of their familiarity around the kitchen. It looks like they're actually cooking in a home kitchen, but looks can be deceiving. Food Network has a studio in New York City, and most of the chefs travel to the Big Apple to film their shows. Emeril Lagasse told Grub Street that he used to venture to the city to film over a week's worth of shows in just one day. And Guy Fieri made his Guy's Big Bite set a haven of all his favorite things, as explained by Food Network. One exception is Ina Garten, the barefoot contessa who, according to BuzzFeed News, filmed her show at her Hamptons home, even though she could have easily commuted from Long Island to New York City. But if we had a kitchen as functional and beautiful as Garten's, we'd make a film crew come to us too. When speaking to The New York Times, former Food Network producer Pat O'Gorman predicted that Food Network would stay popular, and she was correct. The station has remained a beloved television destination for those who want to learn to cook, discover a great dining destination, or watch a pastry chef's childhood Easter basket come to life. In fact, it's about the only station you can watch if you're interested in all three. The COVID-19 pandemic shook the world. People landed in front of their television sets, desperate for programming to distract them from everything that was going on. For some, that was Food Network. In May 2020, Kathleen Finch, a Discovery executive, told AP News, People are gravitating to our networks and talent because we provide more than entertainment right now. The network's ratings increased by 25% in April 2020, compared to April 2019. Food Network remained successful in 2021, despite pandemic restrictions loosening and many viewers returning to their regularly scheduled programming. Network executive Courtney White stated, All year long, Food Network has been committed to super-serving our audience and inviting new fans to the brand, and we we are thrilled with our 2021 success. Chefs on the network have come and gone, but some haven't left on the best of terms. Both Emeril Lagasse and the late Anthony Bourdain exited Food Network unhappily. Lagasse, as noted, was one of the first chefs to join the station, and he nearly became synonymous with Food Network. Best known for Emeril Live and Essence of Emeril, the man of many catchphrases left the cable network in 2007. Hey, don't touch that dial! 
insinuating that he might have stayed longer had he been welcome, he told GQ. When it ended, everybody felt like it was time for a little break. I didn't necessarily think that, but that's what everybody else thought, that maybe it was time for a break from Emerald. Bourdain, who's better known for Travel Channel's Anthony Bourdain, No Reservations, first filmed a similar show for Food Network called A Cook's Tour. After two seasons, he moved networks. It was never publicly announced why Bourdain left, but since he vocalized his thoughts on the network several times after leaving, we assume his exit was on bad terms. After all, according to Atlanta Magazine, he once said, Ina Garten is one of the few people on Food Network who can actually cook. Ouch.